Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love. Every Sunday here at College Church, our services are wrapped around the Christian calendar, sort of as a reminder to all of us that in our own lives, our priorities, our schedules, our rhythms are meant to be oriented around the person and the work of Jesus Christ. But this week is Christ the King Sunday. So instead of just emerging from a specific point in the Christian calendar, we're actually going to walk through the entire Christian calendar together from Advent to Ordinary Time. 
So I invite you to lean in, participate actively, and use your bulletin sort of as a roadmap for where we'll be going throughout the service in the different seasons of the Christian year. Let's continue in worship by praying together. Holy Spirit, you are the one who is near to us. You promised to be. And so help us this morning to experience your nearness that we might hear you more clearly. It's in the name of the Father and the Son and the Spirit that we pray. Amen.
Tell her that her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned. Yes, the Lord has punished her twice over for all her sins. Listen, it's the voice of someone shouting, clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make a straight way through the wasteland for our God. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee to a virgin named Mary. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end.
seated. Ushers, you can come forward to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. We give to a God who first gave to us. So let's continue worshiping him together and remembering his life and ministry here on this earth. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. Some wise men from the Eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn King of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. After talking to Herod, the wise men went on their way. The star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John, but John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, so why are you coming to me? It should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were opened and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. A voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. There was a wedding celebration in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the celebration. The wine supply ran out during the festivities, so Jesus' mother told him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, that's not our problem. My time is not yet come. But his mother told the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Standing nearby were six water jars used for Jewish ceremonial washing. Jesus told the servants to fill the jars with water. When the jars had been filled, he said, Now dip some out and take it to the master of ceremonies. When the master of ceremonies tasted the water that was now wine, not knowing where it had come from, he called the bridegroom over. A host always serves the best wine first. Then when everyone has had a lot to drink, he brings out the less expensive wine. But you have kept the best until now. This miraculous sign at Cana in Galilee was the first time Jesus revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. The Word of the Lord. Hear this portion of the story of God as it is found in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain to be alone. As the men watched, Jesus' appearance was transformed and his clothes became dazzling white, far whiter than any earthly bleach could ever make them. Then Elijah and Moses appeared and began talking with Jesus. Peter exclaimed, Rabbi, it's wonderful for us to be here. Let's make three shelters as memorials, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said this because he didn't really know what else to say, for they were all terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my dearly loved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, Moses and Elijah were gone, and they saw only Jesus with them. As they went back down the mountain and returned to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd surrounding them, and some teachers of religious law were arguing with them. When the crowd saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with awe, and they ran to greet him. Jesus asked, what is all this arguing about? 
One of the men in the crowd spoke up and said, Teacher, I brought my son so you could heal him. He is possessed by an evil spirit that won't let him talk. And whenever the spirit seizes him, it throws him violently to the ground. Then he foams at the mouth and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I ask your disciples to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't do it. Jesus said to them, you faithless people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought the boy, but when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion, and he fell to the ground, writhing and foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has this been happening? He replied, since he was a little boy, the spirit often throws him into the fire and into water trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. What do you mean, if I can, Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. The father instantly cried out, I do believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak. I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again. <laughs> then the spirit screamed and threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy appeared to be dead. A murmur ran through the crowd as people said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet, and he stood up. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. of Jesus revealed at the transfiguration. But then Christ comes down the mountain and he steps into the lives of ordinary people and we watch the darkness react. Because you can't have an encounter with Christ and stay the same. Everyone in this story, from the disciples to the father to the demon-possessed boy, respond to Christ. And when we have a right understanding of God, we gain a right understanding of self. We recognize that we are broken and in need of a savior. Because of God's great love for us, uh, let us join our voices together in confessing our sins against God and against our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. We may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name, amen. Church, can we stand together as we hear God's good news of forgiveness? Because of his great compassion, the Lord has separated us from our sins as far as the east is from the west. 
in Christ, we're not just forgiven, we're made new. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Every voice. Glory to God, glory to God. The next day, the news that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem swept through the city. A large crowd of Passover visitors took palm branches and went down the road to meet him. They shouted, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hail to the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and rode on it, fulfilling the prophecy that said, Don't be afraid, people of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming, riding on a donkey's colt. Many in the crowd had seen Jesus call Lazarus from the tomb, raising him from the dead, and they were telling others about it. That was the reason so many went out to meet him. They wanted to see and learn about this miraculous sign. Then the Pharisees said to one another, there's nothing we can do. Look, they've all gone after him. Jesus crossed the Kidron Valley with his disciples and entered a grove of olive trees. Judas, the betrayer, knew this place, for Jesus had often gone there with his disciples. The leading priests and Pharisees had given Judas a contingent of Roman soldiers and temple guards to accompany him. Now, they enter the grove with blazing torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus fully realized all that was about to happen to him, so he stepped forward to meet them. Who are you looking for? He asked them. Jesus, the Nazarene, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. When he said, I am he, they all drew back and fell to the ground. Once again, Jesus asked them, who are you looking for? And again, they replied, Jesus the Nazarene. I have told you that I am he, said Jesus. And since I am the one you're looking for, let these others go. So they took Jesus away. Carrying the cross by himself, he went to the place called Place of the Skull. There they nailed him to the cross. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there and they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and they held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. And then he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit.
joy of the resurrection.
church, let's declare our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. God, if we're honest this morning, we admit that we pretty frequently have uh, a, a too frail a definition of ordinary. When we think about the word ordinary, we kind of go, meh. We think of the ordinary humdrum stuff of our everyday life. But you remind us through scripture and you remind us through the power of your spirit and through ordinary time that whatever the ordinary Christian life is, it's rooted in the fact that you've given us the power of the Holy Spirit, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead so that we can be free, not just from the guilt of sin, but from the power of sin and even the bent of sin so that we can say along with the psalmist, you are our shepherd. And because that's true, we have everything we need. That's good news for us this morning, God, because there are challenges before us, before our community, before our congregation, before us as individuals that are just too big for us. We don't have the resources for them. We think of some of those people in our congregation even now who are going through times of recovery or transition, people like Suzanne Vardaman or Jeff Luttrell, Arlene McMahon or Mary June Parks or the Metzes, the Evans, the Bonners and the family of Esther Hoffman. And we ask that your nearness would be their comfort this morning. Others of us, God, aren't necessarily going through a time of outward transition. It's not very obvious what the transition in our lives look like, looks like. But maybe we're wondering, if we're honest with you and with ourselves, if faith is just sort of a decorative, ornamental thing in our life, something that brings beauty, or if it's actually something that holds weight if faith is actually a load-bearing thing. We're wondering, if we're honest, how your faith stands up to the real suffering that we see around us when we look at our neighbors, when we look at ourselves, when we look at headlines. And so, God, we ask this morning that you would, by your Spirit, give us eyes to see what you're up to in the stuff of our everyday lives and let us, by your Spirit, use those raw materials to respond to your invitation and to partner with you in what you're doing, but also in who you would have us to become. Let us look at our homes, our neighbors, our friends, even and especially maybe our enemies, and see where holiness may be hiding in places we haven't even thought to look. It's in the life-giving name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask those who have come this morning prepared to help serve the sacrament to present themselves at the stations at which they'll be serving we're reminded really by a lot of salvation history and especially by communion that God often does his most extraordinary things with stuff that we overlook every day. Stuff like mud and spit, fish and loaves, water and wine, bread and cup, you and me. And so it's in that spirit that we approach the table this morning, remembering that on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took just an ordinary loaf of bread. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, for this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Holy Spirit, we ask that these ordinary elements may, commu may, may communicate extraordinary grace to ordinary people. 
so that they can nourish us not just in body, but in spirit through the real presence of your son, Jesus Christ. It's in your name we pray, amen. You take Redeem.